Champagne-Ardennes region lies in northern France and borders Ile de France, Burgundy and Lorraine. The fertile soil and chalk rocks of this region offer optimum conditions for grapevine growing. The largest part of this region is part of the Paris Basin. To the north lie the Ardennes, Argonne, then along the river Meuse and along the plateau in the southeast. French history has always been closely connected with Champagne. French kings were crowned here and the important battles of the Marne were fought here. Famous people like Attila, Napoleon, Joan of Arc and of course Don Perignon, a Benedictine monk who discovered the secret of sparkling wine, have left their traces here. Splendid buildings, sacred monuments of great times and tidy small towns, all that is characteristic of the Champagne region. Hospitable people, as well as the French baguette culture, are evidence of the joy of life, savoir vivre, and immediately you begin developing a fondness for this region. Very French is also the motto of Champagne, live like God in France. This of course applies mainly to cuisine. Nobody can say no to champagne and such attractively decorated delicacies. Best explore the charm of the Champagne region on the route touristique. The best means of transport is a horse carriage. This way you can feel even more closely connected to this beautiful landscape and you can enjoy the fresh air as well as Mother Nature. The well-marked route touristique goes through many small viticultural villages, such as for example Haute-Ville, that can be regarded as the birthplace of Champagne, because it was here where Dom Perignon developed the predecessor of today's Champagne. Around noon, Haute-Ville looks almost lifeless, no masses of people, no traffic. This is no place for people who are seeking entertainment. Only one who values quiet and peace can enjoy it here in the village and can feel good here. Caringly decorated shop signs on houses proudly point at the long viticultural tradition. After tasting only a drop, you will understand that people here are true experts in this tradition. The trip continues further to the small town of Ai. Also here, the main characteristic is peace. You can usually meet local people only in front of the bakers where they buy their daily bread. The only sound is the perpetual rhythmic clopping of horses' hooves striking the ground. Verzenay is also peacefully sleepy like the whole of Champagne and the inhabitants enjoy their favourite activity, pétanque, in the shade of the trees. The symbol of Verzenay is an old windmill in the middle of the vineyards. Pleasant paths invite you to take a walk around the town. If 
this isn't thrilling enough for you, you can find many opportunities for another hobby, golf. In local clubs you can hire equipment so that there need not be anything between you, the ball and the green. Families travelling with children who want some action should visit Cité des Sciences, an entertainment park that introduces science and technology to children in an enjoyable way. In an exact replica of a TV studio, children can try to forecast the weather or try their hand at direct live broadcasting behind a camera. There are no restrictions on hunger for knowledge and all puzzles are revealed so that it's interesting and fun. How was Superman taught to fly in the film? Children are simply enthralled to be here. You can play here with machines like with this one for communication. And you can talk to people who you in fact don't know. Here children can thoroughly explore the human body too. Listen to your own heartbeat or see what the skeleton does when you move. All of them are fascinated as they look at optical illusions and tricks and they show their own skills. Absolutely most popular highlight is the video phone. To phone and at the same time see each other, that's ingenious. To play with a computer and at the same time to explore the world, that's how easy it is here in the Cité des Sciences. Construction of the cathedral in Rheim started in the 13th century. Thanks to its beautiful sculptural decoration and unified style, the cathedral ranks highly amongst the most important Gothic cathedrals in Christendom. The fire in 1480 damaged the tops of the spires, but this small imperfection isn't important compared to the overall beauty of the elaborate façade. The interior feels huge. The body of the church is 38 meters high. Absolutely unique are the colored stained glass windows. Marc Chagall provided sketches for some of these pieces of art, but only a few paintings have